off our fifth season. And I am, I don't know, I'm, I'm out of words. I'm flabbergasted. I am Verklemp because I am being joined by not only one of my closest friends in the world, but two of my favorite podcasters in the world of professional wrestling. And I am just thrilled, and I know for a fact we're going to get some of the best debates out of this competition, which is, of course, for charity. And now let me introduce the competitors one at a time. First off, he is the vet in this group. He is the first ever Mr. Melee in the Bank trivia winner. He is my friend. He is your friend. He is the soon-to-be host of the I Figured That YouTube series. He is the master plan. How are you doing, buddy? Like the kids say, you're. Okay, sure. <laughs> Way to keep it short and to the point. Uh, I am now joined, as I had already mentioned, by the hosts of the Josh and Stu Pro Wrestling Podcast. They are, of course, Josh and Stu, but let me first introduce, let me start with Stuart Irvine, who is also the man behind Retro Wrestling Reviews, or as retro reviews as they are known. Stuart, how are you doing today, bro? Yeah, I'm cool, man. I'm good. Just looking forward to getting started with this debate, man. Oh, I love it. I love it. And not to be outdone, never last and never least, he is a star of both the stage and theater. He is a contributor to what culture? He is Joshua Plummer. How are you doing today, my friend? Well, very well, my friend. Thank you very much for that very kind intro. Thank you, thank you. And I am so grateful for all of you, not only to just be doing this on our wacky little show, but to be doing this for the various charities that you are competing for, that we are sharing right now on screen. And uh, let's get right into it, gentlemen. These are one-on-one -on -one debates, and the winner of this block will move on to our semifinals where the rewards are greater. Damasta Plan, are you ready? Yes. You are ready. Okay. You will be going head-to-head -head with Mr. Stuart Irvine, and your question is, are you ready to rock, Damasta Plan? Just give me one second. All right. While I give you that one second, our debates are always judged on the principles of Kurt Angle's three eyes, intelligence, intensity, and integrity. And I'm pretty sure I botched the order of that. Now, for any of you wondering what odd sounds you are hearing, Damasta Plan is going to his undisclosed location. Yes, he's in a warehouse facility. Why? That's none of our business. Damasta Plan, you're up first in answering this question. All right. What is what is the best animal sidekick in wrestling history? I think uh, when you think about like the animals in wrestling history, my answer will have to go for something that I feel is obvious, but it's top of the line. I will have to go with Jake the Snake Roberts and his snakes. Oh, I you feel went that with it, snakes plural, so you're not picking one. I feel like you'd need to pick one to have, have a really a solid moment. Answer. What? If it, ha it does, it have to be a very significant one. No, Not just I'm, I'm so you're just you're just checking off Jake the Snake's menagerie of snakes or whatever the hell you call a group of snakes. I That's mean, what he you're had going a with? lot of snakes. Um, okay, so provide your there. answers. D defend it. You've got two minutes on the clock. Jake the Snake Roberts is a uh, of blah blah. <clears throat> He's a Are very okay? well accomplished. Yeah, just this mask is uh very interesting. He is a very accomplished uh, main eventer, especially for his promos, the psychology, the sinisterness ju just behind his words, very articulate, very careful what he's choosing. And the fact that he adds snakes to his repertoire is just instilling the fear, just bringing out the fear. And if I could take one moment from my childhood, being exposed to Jake the Snake Roberts for the first mm -hmm. time, was that infamous scene where Macho Man Randy Savage was tied up against the ropes. And for him to go as far as to bring out a King Cobra, a King Cobra, just to whip it out of the bag, just the gnawing at the arm of the Macho Man, seeing that fear in his eyes, just seeing that reaction, and just seeing that sinister satisfaction off Jake Roberts. 
uh, that instilled a lot of fear in me as a kid. That kind of put the fear of snakes in me seeing 50 that. 50 seconds. But understanding, the psych- but understanding where he's coming from, he's trying to – it's a mental game. He wants to beat you mentally first. He wants to break you down mentally and emotionally until you're just a prone body in the middle of the ring. Mm-hmm. And I think just for that one example of many – with the with Randy Savage, with Andre the Giant, he's had many victims along the path that had led him to a you know seconds. a successful career. Whether he won a main, whether he won a main promotions championship or not, mm-hmm. uh, the, the snake speak for itself. That's all I gotta say. Okay, that's fine. Stu, you've heard your opponent's answer. What do you got? Um. Well, the funny thing is about this is like um. As you said, it's the quite it's the most obvious answer, but it seems to be I've got the same one. Um, well, Both for the fact that, Dude. yeah, uh, yeah, just uh, it's. Off, to be fair though, it's like when, when you're talking about like best psychics, it's like you want you think of someone that's sort of like um, uh, is more than just <coughs> someone that support like you know just like a support a supporting role. <coughs> uh, and obviously, Jake the Snake, Jake the Snake's uh, Robert Snake, his base, his basically does. He takes that from just being just a just ha- having an animal, and sort of taking it to another level of being involved in the angles that he's involved in. Uh, obviously, as, as stated, he sort of um, the way he uses uses the snake to sort of like unnerve his opponents and sort of uh, mind games he played with play with them. Uh, it sort of truly it truly embraced sort of what he was. Uh, as stated, as obviously you've got the whole um, Jesus, shit, no, thing there. Um, yeah, he sort of um, embodied the whole sort of like what he was, and sort of, um, and he sort of, he said, played mind games with all of them, and sort of, as stated, sort of macho man Randy Savage thing. Mm-hmm. Where he, so it's like actually, the snake actually bit his ass. That's I find quite hilarious. Yeah. Um, and, and sort of the way it sort of creeps the you know it's just the whole thing is like I hate snakes, so it creeps me out so much. So it's sort of like I, I think that's why he sort of is the it's kind of the obvious okay. one, the best one because it's like he's, thirty seconds he's more than just yeah he's just more <clears throat> than just a, a, like a pot, you know. He was okay. used to like make stories better or make you know makes made everything just um, yeah better really. So. Right. So here's, here's the beautiful thing. Normally, I would give you each a minute to ding the other's answer, but you have the same answer. So instead, now, in terms of your opening arguments, yes, uh, domestic plan, you had plenty of time to uh, list out some truly fantastic responses. The only problem with that is, is that you kept making noise during Stu's time, so I'm going to have to ding you for that, my friend. So... This is going to be a quick one-minute response from the both of you. And, and Stu, now you get to go first. Who is the second best animal sidekick in pro wrestling history? And why? One uh, minute. Uh, uh, I mean, top of my head, obviously, because the research did, is, uh, I would say uh, the, uh, the bulldog for the British bulldog. Okay. Uh, just because, of, again, what it represents. Uh, what he represented and sort of like how important the dog was sort of for the, you know, the British Bulldog sort of whole gimmick. And obviously had that famous uh, bit where the dog was, um, was it stolen? Okay. By, by, but hey. stole, so yeah, I would say that would be the second best in my opinion. Okay. The master plan. What do you got? Second best animal sidekick. Let's go. First of all, Stu, I want to apologize for the noise in the background. <laughs> I will be well away for the next time. Uh, second of all, um, cool, I'm going to take, sh- take a shot in the dark. Story of my life. So, animal. Underneath that bracket is mammals. Humans fall under mammals. And if I have to pick the best animal sidekick, I'm going to go shot in the dark. I'll go with the animal, Batista. Okay, so Stu, congratulations. There you, you go. You take the first question. <laughs> wow. Wow. You you could have gone so many routes with that and, and you just you just handed it to him. You just handed Stu the question. You're just because like, no. to be perfect, to be honest on reality, we both picked the same answer, but he are, he put it out so much better than I could, you know. 
No, I, I was, I I was, was going to tell you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? I was going to tell you that in terms of speaking of Jake Snakes, Stu was, he was on the side of saying, oh, yeah, no, that's the right answer, and here's why. But you had given up so much more info. But then you made the noise, and you were disrespectful, and and then you're just like, I'm going to go know, with the man. animal Batista. No, I apologize. Batista, are you kidding that me? That was my olive. That is my olive. Uh, well, Stu, congratulations. You have won your head-to-head, earning you two points in the block. Stu, for right now, you are the block leader. How does it feel? Oh, it feels great. I mean, I, I, I know we don't. I know we not top. I know we don't top tables, so it's kind of like a nice feeling to be top for a little while, anyway. So, All right. yeah, I'm, I'm feeling All good right now. 